Good morning, good morning. Praise the Lord, everybody. Good morning in the house of the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Good morning and welcome to Holy Bethel. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. It is time for us to worship. I don't know about you, but I was excited running into the house of the Lord on today. It's just a good day to be in the house of the Lord. And we want to welcome everybody into Holy Bethel Church of God in Christ, a church where everybody is somebody and only Jesus reigns supreme. We thank God uh, for just being here in the building today. And we thank God for our leaders on today. We want to give a hand clap of praise for our pastors. Amen. That's Dr. Roosevelt Allen Jr. Amen. A great man of God, powerful man of God, and his wife, Supervisor Rosetta Allen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand break for our leaders on today. We have such great leaders. We got such great people of God in the house of the Lord. And I want to thank God for each and every person that's in the house on today. So can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise for each person in the house on today? Amen. We're going to open up our service with prayer on this morning. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this day, God. Lord, we thank you for every moment that you've given us on this day, every move that you're making even right now, God. As we prepare to lift up our hands, oh God, to give you the glory, to give you the praise. God, we want you to just have your way on today, God. Lord, we ask that you move by your spirit, oh God. That you come in and break yokes on today, God. That you deliver and set free on today, God. That you save and sanctify on today, God. That you make families hold on today, God. That you just have your way on today, God. Move by your spirit, oh God. We want to see you, oh God. Move in the lives of people on today, God. Lord, touch the word of God that's going to go forward, oh God. Touch your vessel that's using, oh God, that's good, that you're going to be using today, oh God, to deliver the word of God with power, with authority, oh God, and with, with, with your love, God, in the name of Jesus. We just thank you right now, God, for all that you're going to do on this day, God. We thank you for salvation. We thank you for healing. We thank you for power. Lord, we thank you for your anointing on today. We are just moved by your spirit. Let your spirit, God, touch those that are joining in online, oh God. Lord, that they may receive, oh God, what you have for them on today, God. We thank you, oh God, for every divine appointment that you're meeting on today, God. Nothing happens on accident. We know you're moving in this place today. So we receive everything that you have for us in the name of Jesus. Amen. We have a scripture on this morning, just two verses. Hey man, we're going to read uh, Revelations 12, verse 10 and 11. Hey Amen. It says, And I heard a loud voice saying in the heavens, Now is come salvation yeah. and the strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of Christ, for the accuser of the brethren is cast down, which accuseth them before our good God day and night. It says, And they overcame. They, and they overcame him with the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony yep. and the love they, and they love not their lives unto the, amen. amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise for the read the, the word. Look, we're going to get ready to go into our worship service. Keep that praise going out. Everybody to participate as we turn, turn the service over to our praise team. Good morning, Holy Bethel. The song says, like a dew in the morning, gently rest upon my heart. Amen. Ask the Lord to breathe, to rain, to shine. Amen. Within us. The morning gently rest upon my heart like the dew in the morning gently rest upon my heart hey, like the dew in the morning.
Everybody love him in the room today. Can we just worship, if you don't mind? Everybody, I live, shh, I live. I lift my hands in total adoration to you. Yes, we do. You reign. You reign on the throne. The throne. For you are God. For you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. I can sing to you. I can sing to you this song. I just want to say. I just want to say that I love, love you more than anything. Lift those hands high. I live. I lift my hands in total adoration. To you. You're the only God I worship. You reign on the throne, for you are God and God alone. Because of you, my because of you, my day. cloudy days are gone. I can sing to you this song. I can sing to you this song. I just want to say. I just want to say that I love you. Yes, I do. I worship and adore you. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell. Just want to tell you. Anybody love him? Lord, I love you more than anything. Oh, yes, I do. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Come on, tell him I worship. some harmony on it.
than anything. More 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 than anything. Come on, speak well of him. Come on, open your mouth and just worship him. Come on, have a conversation. Come on, tell him how much you love him. Come on, Zion. Yeah. Come on, open your mouth. the praise. He's worthy of the glory. Nobody like him. 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 One more time. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Come on, tell him I worship with praise, fill it with worship, fill it with praise, fill it with worship, open up your mouth, declare unto the Lord his goodness, declare unto the Lord his greatness, God is great and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, oh magnify the Lord with me, let us exalt his name together. Somebody shake hands with somebody and tell them I come to magnify him today. Tell them today is my day for a breakthrough. Tell them today is my day for a miracle. Tell them today is my day to get a word. Oh yeah, today is Sunday. Tell them I don't have to act dignified. I don't have to act like I got good sense. Because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, somebody say, my soul, y'all ain't saying nothing in the room, my soul cries out hallelujah. Is anybody saved in the house today? Hallelujah. Thank God I'm saved. Put those hands together. We come to lift Jesus. Lift Jesus higher. Lift Jesus higher. I just came to magnify. I just came to glorify. I just came to praise the Lord. For He, for He is worthy. Worthy of all the praise. Worthy of all my praise. Worthy. Worthy. Worthy of all the praise. Worthy of all my praise. 
Okay, so now I'm going to keep my word. Look at God's people in here today. Just look around you. Can we put our hands together for God's people who are in the sanctuary and for those who are at home? And, 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 and uh, I, Preston, my grandson, is here. Uh, Mo, uh, Mo, Mother Mo is here. <laughs> Amen. Mo is an attorney as well, so we thank God. Amen. We love you. I, th I saw you when you came in. I had to adjust my glasses, but I saw you. We're glad that you're here. But we love all of God's people. And then there's one other person I want you to help me to celebrate. Can you do that? Wait, 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 wait. Guess who do you think, wait, wait, wait. who do you think it may be? My wife. She's my only wife I ever had. Try it. You'll like it. <laughs> or your money back. But uh, anyway, my wife, Supervisor Rosetta Allen, we thank God for her. Amen. Are you, are you ready for the word of the Lord? Thank you so much for coming to grace us with your presence. We thank God for the praise team, for music ministry. Uh, amen. All right. We got one verse that we're going to work with this morning. I want to uh, praise God for Dr. Lauren Hare. Dr. Hare was uh, expedited for mother in her retreat, and Dr. Hare did a wonderful job. Thank you, Dr. Lauren Hare. Amen. No wonder Brian does so well. In front of that good man is a good woman. <laughs> Amen. Okay, one verse this morning. Second Chronicles, the 20th chapter, and the 20th verse. A familiar scripture. So you, you know the scripture, so it shouldn't take me long to preach that this morning. Huh. And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat, that's the king, y'all, he stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. So there's two things I want you to do. Believe in the Lord your God. And so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets. And so shall ye prosper. Father, we thank you for your word. I pray that for the next fleeting moments, Lord, that you will bless us in ways that we cannot imagine. That you would take a fleeting moment and do an eternal work, Lord. Father, I pray, Lord, sincerely that the meditation of my heart, Lord, and the words of my mouth will be acceptable in your sight. As Lord, you speak that, that only you can speak. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to talk to you very briefly this morning about perilous prosperity. Perilous prosperity, perilous prosperity. And yeah, you may be seated. You may say, no, what, why is he talking about perilous prosperity from reading that verse? It's something how Jehoshaphat the king stands and gives the people a word. Believe in the Lord your God, and so shall you be established. Believe his prophets, and so shall you prosper. Huh, word that says God wants to establish and prosper his people. At the time that Jehoshaphat stood and gave such a word of hope, they were actually in the midst of turmoil and trouble. If you know the scripture, you'll find out that when he told them that, they were surrounded by the enemy. Moab was coming against them. The children of Ammon were coming against them. And the Bible says, and many others. They were about to come to Jerusalem and try to take Jerusalem over. So in a time when it seemed like uh, defeat was, was imminent, a time when they were pressed, this man gives up and gives a word of hope. And it took something for him to give a word of hope. Because if you really know the context of the scripture, before they got in trouble, Jehoshaphat had been in trouble. Because he had been hanging out with the wrong people, doing the wrong things. And a man of God named Jehu had come to him and said, the wrath of God is against you, king. And you know, God has some people who will speak truth to power. So Jehoshaphat had been on shaky territory because he wasn't perfect like some of the church folk. Y'all know we're perfect. We never make mistakes. We never do wrong things. But he went the wrong way. He had done the wrong thing. And as soon as Jehoshaphat made up in his mind that he was going to turn back to God, he began to serve God again. 
and now his trouble. Isn't it funny how sometimes, can, can, we, can I just take a survey? Has anybody ever done something wrong? Raise your hand. Have you ever had a change of heart and decide, I'm going to do right? Raise your hand. And then when you decide to do right, it seems like the enemy came and everything came at you, but the kitchen sink. You ever had that happen? And so when that happens, you're, you're there and you're saying, Lord, I, I, I'm trying to do the right thing now. I'm trying to serve you now. I'm trying to do the things you would have me to do now. And the enemy is coming against me. I, I really don't know. Am I, is it maybe some retribution theology? Am I perhaps getting what I deserve? Jehoshaphat really did not know what was going on. All he knew that he was trying to serve God. Now the enemy comes against God. And the Bible says that he feared. He was afraid. And so, so he was afraid the enemy comes. And so it's funny how he gives this word of hope in a time of trouble. But you have to understand the background of the word of hope. When the enemy began to come and he was encamped around them, the Bible says that Jehoshaphat became very afraid. He did not know what to do. He did not know what, how they were going to get out of this. But he did one thing that I like. In the midst of his fear and being afraid, the enemy was attacking them. He didn't go to the army. He didn't go to the military. He didn't consult with any other military leaders. The Bible says that when they were surrounded, he did something that's good for all of us to do. The Bible says that he began to seek the Lord. David said he was glad not only to go into the house of the Lord, but then he said, but it was good for me that I was afflicted. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. And I don't know about you, but sometimes when the enemy comes and we go through things and we go through afflictions, one thing to do that we ought to really always do is to make ourselves go closer to God. So the man, Jehoshaphat, begins to pray. He says, I'm going to seek God on this because we have no strength, we have no might, and I don't know what to do. It takes a transparent leader to say, I don't know what to do. So Jehoshaphat decides that he's going to pray. And one thing I like about what he does is that he goes into the temple in Jerusalem, goes right into the church, goes into the house of God. Sometimes it's, you just got to go into the house of God. I learned from Bishop G. Pastor a long time ago that as a pastor, I can pray at home. I can pray in my car. But when it comes down to taking care of God's people, there are times when I have to come meet God right here on the altar to know what he wants to do in the house. So Jehoshaphat goes into the house of God. And the Bible says that he stood there and he began to pray. He began to pray and he says, oh, wait a minute now. Not only am I going to pray, but I'm going to put out a decree that there's going to be a fast. So that the people are going to pray and they're going to fast. Put in your notes, don't you ever underestimate the power of prayer. I really believe that there's nothing we can't pray our way out of, depending on how hard we want to pray. The Bible says the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous avail it for a little bit. Y'all better correct me. The prayer can't do anything. I hear some talk back in here. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous avail it much. Then Jehoshaphat made them fast. He added some fasting to their prayer. When he added fasting to the prayer, then Elder Taylor, that was really a recipe there because Jesus said, you can say what you want to do. You can dance, you can shout, you can recite, you can go to seminary, you can run, you can skip. But Jesus said, some things ain't going to move unless you do what? Fast and pray. So then he declared a fast, he declared a prayer, he goes into the temple, he goes in there and he stands in the house of God and he begins to talk to God and Jehoshaphat in his anguish begins to pray one of the best prayers that I've ever heard. He was, he was, he was fearful, he was fearful, he was concerned, but yet he was in awe more of the power of God than in the destructive forces of the enemy. And when you face with trouble, you got to be concerned more with the power of God than the destructive forces of the enemy. I want to know who is stronger, the enemy or God. Sometimes it seems like we give the devil more credit than we give God. Every time you see some people, every time you talk to them, how you are going through? How about the, the devil's been out to me, the devil this and that. But every now and then, I want to know, is God doing anything for you? 
Even in the midst of trouble, I'm going to say this and let me go to finish this out. I was thinking about something. I was frustrated a few days ago. I was frustrated. Something was on my mind, but God took me back into how I got what I have. And when I thought about how I got what I have, because God gave it to me, I'm going to finish this up. God gave it to me, see? When God gives you something, you got to learn to protect what God gives you. When I thought about what God gave me, all of a sudden I said, I'm not complaining anymore. Uh, no, you don't understand. And then the revelation of the scripture came to me. The reason Jehoshaphat was messed up is because he was upset because God had given his people something called Jerusalem. And now the enemy is coming to try to take back what God had given. Just because God gives you something does not mean the enemy won't try to take it back. But the problem with a lot of us is when the going gets tough, we give back what God has already given so in the midst of my dilemma, can I explain my dilemma? They don't probably care. I was so tired, y'all. I was tired. I've been working since Thursday on call, gone from home. I've been home a few hours since Thursday, doing everything I know to do. Got home about 4 or 5 o'clock this morning, want to come out to the church house. And I was like, Lord, can I really tell y'all what I told the Lord? Take this job that I have and do something with it. And God reminded me. He says, but how did you get the job? I said, well, Lord, I remember... Y'all don't mind if I'm transparent to you. I said, well, Lord, the way I got the job was when, when, when I started working there and they offered me to become a partner. The truth be told, I didn't have the financial resources to buy my way in. And so since I didn't have the money to buy my way in, I said, I'll just go on and walk over somewhere else. At that time, we had two offices. And so then there was a Jewish man. I'm going to call his name. I'm going to call his name Philip Demetrius Edwards. And he called at my house, and it was a large sum of money. I don't know, $150,000, 200000 something like that. And he says, I'm going to give you the money. I got confused because that was the same man who criticized me for my walk with God. That was a man who told me because I would go to Bible study to teach in a church that had four members. On Wednesday, he got mad because I would not come here him give lectures downtown. There was the same man who called me in his office and said, I will fire your blank if I could. But something happened between then and now. Now the same man. The same man. Who thought my life and my family were not worth his ego. The very same man said, I want to give you the money. I said, no. Pride will cause you to do things that you don't want to do. Some of us will have more blessings if we didn't walk in pride so much. I said, no, I don't want it. And hung up the phone. Yeah. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And then God said, I'm trying to bless you, boy. And then I'm praying, Lord, should I call him back? Before I could finish the prayer, he called me back. He's saying, I want to do this for you. God said, take the money. I'm still arguing with God. God said, well, you want to argue? Just tell him you'll give it back in three years. So because of pride, I said, I'll give it back to you in three years. Took the money. Fast forward. 41 offices, 49 physicians, 22 mid-levels. I don't work for them, I own them. So in my frustration, God said, how did you get what you have? I say, Lord, if it had not been for you on my side, then I would not have it. Then God say, stop complaining about what I've given you, but learn how to ride out your assignment. So in this text, the enemy came to try to take back what God had already given his people. Look at your neighbor. Say, ride it out. So you better know what God has given you. And you better learn how to appreciate what God has given you. Because if you appreciate what God has given you, he'll give you the strength to ride it out. I don't look like I've been up since Thursday. I don't look like I've not had sleep. 
I don't look frustrated. I don't look tired. I hear you, Bishop, Mr. Clean White. I don't look like what I've been through. But to God be the glory. When you learn how to remember what God has done in your life and give him glory, praise, and honor, God will give you strength that you didn't even know you had. He'll put your attitude in check. He will cause your blood pressure to come down. He will cause the gray to go out of your hair. He will cause the frowns to come off your face. And you'll be standing there at four in the morning. God bless y'all. So Jehoshaphat said, God, they're trying to take back. He begins to pray and he says, God, you're God all by yourself. You're God in heaven. You're God on the earth. You're the God of all nations. You got everything in your hand. He says, God, you drove out the inhabitants of this land. You gave this to us. Look at your neighbor and say, you better learn to appreciate what God has given you. God has blessed a whole lot of us in here, giving us a whole lot of stuff. And just because God gave it does not mean the enemy is not going to try to take it. But you've got to stop punking out when the enemy tries to take it. But make up in your mind that if God gave it to you, that it's yours and the enemy has no right to mess with it. Has no right to, uh-huh. I'm going to keep my word. Can I have five more minutes of your time? So then, so then, he says, God, if you did it before, then I know you can do it again. Oh, that's some old country church right there. Look there, you run tell your neighbor, say, if God did it before, I know God can do it again. You got to remember what God has already done when you need for God to do something right now. Not only if God did it for you in your life, but if he's ever done it in the world before, you got to know if somebody else got it, you can get it too. So he says, God, you've done it before. I know that you can do it again. And he began to say, but Lord, in spite of all that, we just simply open up and we cry unto you. And we say, help, Lord. It's something about when you stand in the house of God and the presence of God. And you're depending on the provision of God. And you've got enough godliness in you to just say, Lord, help right now. Oh, I feel miracles being released right now. I feel God doing something right now. I feel God making a way out of no way for somebody right now. Where you are and what you're going through and what you need and where you are I challenge you right now to lift up your hands and say Lord I need your help right now I need your help right now Lord hear me Lord and then God help me Lord I believe that God is going to do what he says he is going to do he begins to pray he begins to give God the glory give God the praise and give God the honor and then in the midst of Jehoshaphat praying then the spirit of God begins to flap don't you know that when the enemy comes in like a flood the spirit of the Lord shall do what lift up a standard he began to pray then Jehoshaphat was sitting over there minding his own business that's like Mother, Mother McIntosh, not leading the service, not leading prayer, minding her own business. But when the Spirit of God began to move, then Jehaziel, which means God sees, began to get a revelation. Don't y'all know that God sees everything? Jehaziel gets a revelation, then he begins to speak to the people. He begins to calm them down. He begins to let them know things. He says, this is what God says. Look at somebody right now and say, you got to understand that when the enemy comes after what you already have, that means that God is putting you on the brink through and the brink of giving you something that you're yet to receive. Because he knows that if you don't treasure what God has already given you, then there's no way you can appreciate the blessing that's headed your way. In other words, if you're under duress, if you're under stress, right now if the enemy is challenging you right now trying to take your stuff and mess you up and trying to surround you and kill you and take you out I came to let you know that you're one step away from a miracle you're one step away from a blessing you're one step away from God doing something you're one step away from getting those things that you've been praying for grab a hand my somebody sitting by you say just hold on a little while longer you're one step away hold on a little while longer God is getting ready to do something in your life who told you to give up who told you to quit who told you to get out of the race who told you to say that God has forgotten about you that neighbor didn't believe you grab another hand and say you better hold on in there say you're one step away and God is getting ready to do something for you that's about to blow your mind something that's magnificent Jehaziel said look here God already knows what the enemy is doing the enemy is going to be down at Azig the enemy is going to be where he is because God knows everything God says I know every plot that's come against you I know about every piece of mail that's already been put in the mail that's coming your way I know about the contract that's been signed against you before the hand that right is signed y'all don't hear me now he says why, why, why? he says I created the 
I created the smith. I created the weapon. But then he says, but no weapon formed against you shall prosper. It's just not going to work because that's your heritage. Because you are a child of God. God said, I saw it coming before it got there. I saw the bad news before they told you. I saw them before they tried to abduct your daughter. I saw him before he tried to pimp out your girl. I saw them before they tried to get your kids hooked on drugs. Uh, tell your neighbor, say, God saw it all before it happened. He saw it all before it came. He saw it all coming. And then he told you, hey, to tell them, because you're praying out to me, because you are praying, because you understand that you have a right to be thankful for what I've already given you. He says, I want you to understand that, yeah, you got a fight on your hand. Yes, the enemy is coming after you. Yes, you are surrounded right now. But he gave that profound word. He says, but guess what? He says, the battle is not yours. But this battle right here is the lowest battle. I wish I had a Holy Ghost filled church. But this is... Ah... I'm down to about four minutes. Uh, this battle is not yours, but this is God's battle. This is God's battle. It's in God's hand. But I don't want you to go back home and eat popcorn and drink orange Kool-Aid. I don't want you to go to bed and cover up your head. I don't want you to pretend like nothing's going on. All those sister prince of battle is the Lord's. I still need for you to show up. I still need for you to do something. You got to learn to show up even though the battle is in the Lord's hand. Look at your neighbor and say, God says, show up. God says, show up. God says, show up. God says, show up. He says, show up. He says, I want you to show up. I want you to get down to them. I want you to go and confront the enemy. When you go and confront the enemy, I just want you to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. What does it mean to stand still? Position yourself to know that God is getting ready to blow your mind. I, I feel, sometimes we move too quick and we make... And we make permanent decisions over temporary circumstances and temporary setbacks. But I've learned to stand still. I, I, I know I'm a little theatrical, but I need somebody to just step out and say, stand still. Sometimes you got to stand still when it don't feel good. You got to stand still when it doesn't seem good. You got to stand still when it seems like there's a better way. Touch somebody on the shoulder and say, God says, stand still. He says, position yourself because then you'll see the salvation of the Lord. I believe as I stand here that that same God is sending us a message right now for me to let somebody know that if you let the Lord fight your battles, so you stand still and shut your mouth. Huh? You stand Stand still and stop talking about those who are talking about you. You stand still and stop trying to sabotage people who are sabotaging you. You stand still when they go low. You don't even go high. Just stand still. You stand still when they come at you with knives and forks and lies. You don't do the same thing. When you stand still, that frustrates the enemy. I'm trying to help somebody who's about to get a promotion on their job right now. Your boss don't even like you. Your boss's boss can't even stand you. But God told me he's going to buy past your boss, your boss's boss, and the person over your boss's boss to give you the blessing that he wants. Don't y'all know we serve a God like that? I wish I had some help up in here. You ain't got to like me. You don't have to be on my side. You ain't got to think about me. You ain't got to think I'm worthy of it, but I'm going to get whatever God says I'm going to get. I'm going to get what God has. Now they're all excited. Now they're ready. Now they're ready to go forth. It's good and easy to be excited when you're around those who are excited with you but now they say it's time to step out time to come on out the church house time to come on out the temple the God I serve is too big to be God for one hour on Sunday morning he's too strong to just be God for somebody to fall out on the floor I need for God to knock my enemies out he's too big to make me speak in tongues I need for God to bridle their tongue Y'all ain't ready for this. He's too big to have me running around the church like nobody's chasing me. But he's so big I want to run and chase after that that he told me to get. That's the kind of God I serve. A God of purpose. Of down to two minutes and now we're ready to go. They go out and Jehoshaphat says, he says, he says, he says now he stands up when they're ready to go out and now he says believe in the Lord your God and so shall you be established. So shall you be settled. So shall you be made firm. So shall this thing be 
country. So shall you be unmovable. So shall the enemy not be able to turn you around. So shall the enemy not be able to stop you. So shall the enemy not be able to knock you down. Believe in the Lord your God and you'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of living water and you shall not be moved. But you must bring forth your fruit in the season appointed by God. Look down your row. I got a minute and a half and tell somebody God wants to establish you. God wants to establish you. He says, believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Then believe his prophet. Somebody to thank God for the prophetic word. No, no, y'all just pray. Thank God for the prophetic word. Every house don't have a prophetic word. It was a prophetic word that got to me where I am in the secular. It was a prophetic word that I did not want to hear. That came by my wife. I wanted to say, be quiet. I don't want to hear that. But God said, I'm speaking through your wife. That's the prophetic word. You better learn to thank God when there's a prophetic word in the house. God does not have to speak. He does not have to say anything. But there's a prophetic word. And he says, he says, he says, believe my prophet. And so shall ye prosper, so shall you flourish, so shall you come to life, so shall you expand, so shall you have vitality. Jesus said, I came not so you could run around and hear shout, clap your hands. I came that you might have life and have life more abundantly. Believe my prophet and so shall you reproduce, so shall you have vigor, so shall you have vitality, so shall you prosper, so shall ye even have financial success. I need about 2,000 folks listening at me right now who are not afraid to have financial success to just lift their hand and say, Lord, I thank you. I thank you right now and I receive it right now. So he says, now we're going out to battle. He does something unusual. He gets the army. He puts the army together. You would think that they would put the army up front. But no, he takes his praises and puts his praises up front. He puts the praises up front. What is Judah? Judah is the place of praise. When the enemy came, he was coming to take Judah. He was coming to take the praise. Sometimes the enemy will come against you in such a way that you don't even feel like giving God glory. You don't feel like giving him praise. You don't feel like thanking him because of what you're going through. Anybody ever been so down to tell the truth you really didn't feel like praising him? They said praise the Lord I was like I wish they hurry up and go on so the enemy will come and put you through some stuff to take your praise uh huh he says we're going to put the praise first but I've learned from that text that it wasn't just putting the praise first but the enemy was coming after Judah and I've learned that when the enemy comes to take what God has given me I'm going to put it on the line what do you mean by that you trying to mess up my marriage I'm going to put my marriage first You you come to mess with my children and mess up relationship in my house, I'm going to put them first. Uh-oh. You come in to try to, 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 to make me dissatisfied with my job and what's going on and what I'm earth, I'm going to put it first. You're, 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 you're saying that I'm, I, I got an illness, I'm not going to make it, I'm going to die, I'm sick, I'm going to put my health I learned in the text that whatever the enemy messes with, when you really believe God, you learn to put it first. So not only did they put Judah first, but they went out in praise and they put it first. Because when you understand that God's got your back, you no longer fear the enemy. Because of God before you, who can be against you? When the Lord is on your side, you got more than enough on your side. So they go out and they put the praises first. Uh, they put the praises first. Now, and the thing that they praised when they went out is they began to thank God for his mercy. They praised God and said, Lord, your mercy endures forever. I believe Jehoshaphat gave them a little bit of uh, information. He said, look, I'm going to tell y'all the truth. Oh, king done messed up. Oh, king done made a few little mistakes. Oh, king was a little bit unholy. Oh, king is trying to get it together. And y'all know some of y'all got some stuff in your life, too. But when you really need for God to move, one of the best ways to praise him is to thank him for his mercy. Because, see, you can never, oh, God. And when you begin to thank God for his mercy, you can't thank him for something that he won't give you. Because God will be in debt to no man. And I need for somebody who needs for God to help them right now to begin to say, God, have mercy on my soul. Have mercy right now. You know, that's, a, that's called a mercy praise. 
A mercy praise is you're thanking God, yes, for God being God. You're praising him in the beauty of holiness. That's the essence of who he is and what he does and his attributes. But at the same time, you're also saying, Lord, have mercy on me. You're praising God because he's the only one who's good. He's the only one who's all right. He's the only one who's perfect. He's the only one who has all might. And at the same time, you're saying because of your might, then God, I need for you to help me right now. Are y'all ready? The mercy praise says that. Can we take about, oh, about 30 seconds and begin to praise God in this house? Begin to ask him for mercy. Lord, your mercy endure forever. We praise you for who you are. But God, we need you to have mercy right now. Have mercy on our situations and have mercy on our circumstances. But God, we yet thank you. And God, we yet give you glory. Can you begin to tell God your own testimony? Can you begin to say to God what you need for God to do? I can't hear you up in here. I got to go on with the message, but I can't hear you. Can you open up your mouth and say something to God right now? One last time, can you open up your mouth and say something to God right now? I, that was say that was my last praise but as I go to my seat let me tell you this you better get ready for something you better get ready for God to blow your mind God is about to blow your mind and rock your world and shock you like never before thank you Holy Ghost and thank you Jesus uh, what are you talking about Pastor Allen the Bible says as they begin to praise God uh, they put the praises first they put their praise on the line as they began to come and get close to the enemy the Bible says when they finally got to the enemy that they found that the enemy was dead because every time they pray Praise God. God said an ambush against the enemy. There was an ambushment. God did something to confuse the enemy. Praise has a way of confusing the enemy when he thought that you ought to be down based on what you're going through. Now since you understand that, when you open up your mouth this time and you give God glory, I believe that God is setting an ambush in somebody's life because he wants to establish you, because he wants to prosper you. That's why you're going to praise him. Not because he's going to do it. Not because you've been perfect, Jehoshaphat. Because he's merciful. Because he's good because he's God now this time open up your mouth when I lift my hands and give God some praise in this house like you really do mean it and the Holy Ghost is speaking right now saying God will set ambushes God will go out and begin to go where you can't go he'll do what you don't have the strength to do he'll do what you don't have the know-how to do he'll fight that battle for you he'll get the victory for you I want you to praise God now that's why we say you don't have to wait till the battle is over but you can give God glory right now I want you to praise him like he's God Praise him like you got the victory. Praise him like he's doing it right now. Can you give him glory in this atmosphere and glory in this house? Come on and praise him. 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 Yes, Lord. 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 I can see them in my mind. They're praising God. I can see them in my mind. They're giving him glory. I can see them in my mind. They're moving on. I can see them in my mind. They're trusting God. All I got is a praise. All I got is a praise. I don't know what's getting ready to happen, but I still got my praise. I still got my glory. And I still tell God, thank you right now. I feel a praise down on the inside. I feel my glory bubbling up right now. About five o'clock this morning, I began to give God glory. I began to give God praise. And instead of complaining, instead Instead of murmuring, instead of talking about something that nobody else could fix, I was driving back in my car in the midnight hour, driving back in the rain, and I had to pull over to the side. And I say, God, I gotta take a break right now. And I wanna tell you, thank you, Lord. I wanna tell you, thank you, Lord. I gotta tell you, thank you, Lord, because God, you've been so good. You've been good to me, Lord. You've been good to my family, God. You've been good to my wife, God. You've been good in past years. You're good right now. And God, I know you're going to be good. I had a praise break in my car on the side of Pleasant Hill Road. I was daring the police to come by. If the police had stopped me, I would have said, you don't know like I know what he done for me. If the police had said, what you're doing right here? I said, I can't help but to give him thanks. Every time I think on the goodness of the Lord, I got to thank him. And every time I thank him, then I got to think about what he's doing. I need for somebody 
in here in this atmosphere to tell him thank you. Begin to praise him right now. Begin to praise him right now. I know that your marriage may not be what it ought to be, but tell God thank you anyhow. I know the children may be going astray, but God still have them alive. Tell him thank you anyhow. I know you may be sick in your body and you may not be well, but you got breath in your body. You yet got your life. You're yet in your right mind. So can you tell him thank you? I know your money may run in a little funny, but you had food to eat this morning. You got a roof over your head. Can you tell God thank you? I know some things may not be going right, but can you thank God for what is going right? I know there's some things you don't have, but can you thank God for what you do have? Somebody say, yes, Lord. Can y'all go along with me on a praise journey? I can see them praising God right now, still with the enemy all around them, but praising God right now, still in perilous times, but praising God right now, still under duress, but praising God right now, nothing ain't changed, but praising God right now. I know what I got to face when I go home, but right now, in this moment, in this time, and in this space, I got to give God praise. I got to give God glory. I got to give God honor. I wish somebody could feel what I feel. God is calling for a right now praise. He's calling for a praise in the moment. I got to tell God thank you. I got to tell God thank you. Somebody said, come on, let's go. They begin to praise God. God said, if you praise me, and if you stop complaining, I'm going to let you walk into your next. The Bible says, as they were praising God, they walked along, and eventually they kept walking. And what did they run into? They ran into an enemy that had already been destroyed. And God said, the thing that you're fearing most has already been taken care of, but that ain't the end of it. When they began to thank God for what they already had, when they began to praise God and say, God, we're going to hold on to what you're giving. When they got down to the enemy, and this is the part that really made me happy, the Bible says not only was the enemy dead, but the Bible said the enemy had all kinds of stuff. Somebody say stuff. The enemy had all kind of jewels, uh, had all kind of precious things, uh, all kind of money. And the enemy died right there on the spot. Uh, the enemy that tried to take them out became their blessing. And God said, the devil meant it for harm. Uh, but God said, if you praise me the right way, I'll turn it around for your good. He said, everything that was meant for harm, uh, I'll change it to good. How can you do it, Lord? I'm a Romans 8 and 28 kind of guy. And I don't know a whole lot of stuff. Uh, I may not know as much as my good friend Jay Collins on finance. Uh, I may not. I know as much as Deacon uh, as our Elder Thomas on playing basketball. I may not know as much as Dr. Allen on educational system, but it's one thing I do know that all things are working together for my good. All things got to work together for my good because I love the Lord and I won't take it back. And I'm called according to his purpose. And I need you to look at somebody right now and say it's been working for your good. I know you've been in perilous times. I know there's been trouble on every side. I know you've been cast down but you are yet not destroyed. Uh, and every trial you've been through, every traumatic experience, uh, everything you didn't like, uh, every time the enemy came against you to try to set you back, God said it was a setup. And God said everything uh, that came against you is going to turn for your good. Uh, and the Bible says uh, that the enemy that tried to take them out, uh, when they got there, they began to get the riches of the enemy. And God said the folk that hate you, the folk that tried to mess you up, uh, the folk that tried to set you up. He said, Joseph, they were really your blessing. He said, if your brothers had not sold you into slavery, you never would have ended up in Potter's house. If you never would have ended up in Potiphar's house, you never would have gone to jail. If you never would have gone to jail, the baker of uh, the Pharaoh never would have seen you. If the baker and the butler of Pharaoh hadn't seen you, and you had not befriended the butler, then you never would have gotten in Pharaoh's house. If you never got in Pharaoh's house, you never would have been second in command. If you never would have been second in command, you never would have been able to save your brethren. If you never would have been able to save your brethren, then Jesus never would have been born. If Jesus never would have been born, then we wouldn't have been here right now. You got to tell your neighbor, say, name him. Say, everything that's coming against you, God told me to tell you on this morning that he's turning it around right now, that he's using it for your glory right now, that he's using it to get the message done right now, that he's using it for his honor right now. I need you to find three people and say, everything. Somebody say, everything. Y'all playing church, say everything, say everything, 
that's come against you. God told me to tell you this morning that it ain't not the peril is prosperity. This apparel that's going to take you to your next level. This apparel that's going to bring you prosperity. This what you've been through that's going to lift you out. You better find somebody else and say, God said, say, God said everything. I, I came to encourage somebody this morning. Lift up your head. Uh, straighten up your shoulders. Uh, put a greatness in your backbone and know that God got your back. And when it was all said and done with, not only did they preserve what God gave, uh, but they had more than what they started with. Some folk, I had their faith to be blessed. Uh, but I stood there on the side of the road. I say, God, if this is how I get more, then God, I thank you. Folk thought I was crazy. I opened up my car door. It was raining like cats and dogs. I got out of my car on the side of Pleasant Hill and did this in the rain and say, God, I give you the glory. And God, I give you the honor. And God, I give you the praise. I didn't have no organ music. I didn't have no dancers. But I had a song down in my heart that for God I live and for God I die. And God is my shepherd and I shall not walk. And whatever God wants to bless me with, I receive it right now. If I got to go through the fiery furnace, like the three Hebrew boys, I'm coming out with a promotion. If I got to go in the lion's den like Daniel, I'm coming out being better. If I got to go to jail like Joseph, I shall be a ruler. I will not abort my assignment. I will not jump out of the fire. But I'll let my faith be purified. I'll let my walk be strengthened. I'll let God's glory come. I'll go through the fire to get through the blessing. I feel God up in this house. Somebody get this microphone. I feel like preaching. I feel like giving God glory. Somebody take this microphone and give God glory in this house.
somebody didn't know what I was doing. I was just picking up where God left off. He killed the enemy. And because all the silver is God's, all the gold is God's, he didn't have no need for that. So he left it after he fought my battle. So now I can cherry pick. I ain't never really been a fighter, but I know how to cherry pick. So I know how to pick up where God has left off. Cause I got to be established and God wants me to prosper. So if God leads it for me, I got to pick up where God left off. And the wealth of the, the wealth of the wicked. I don't have to be sanctified and broke. I don't have to be saved and disgusted. But God got wealth to save folk. Save millionaires, save billionaires. So when the candidate comes that I like, it would be so good that I could just write a check. Here's ten million dollars. Or whatever the cap may be. And say, do with this what you need to do with it. But look you never say you got to pick up what God leads off. Can you just symbolically and prophetically do this with me? Uh oh. Believe in the Lord. So shall you be established. Believe his prophet. And so shall you prosper. Some of y'all too proud like I was before my rain dance this morning. But if you pick up where God left off, God said he's going to bless you in some unexpected ways and your enemies. Oh, wait a minute. The man who gave me the money was my enemy. The one who blessed me told me he was the one who wanted to fire me. The one who blessed me told me that my priorities were out of order when I said, God, family, and then your stinking job. So can we pick up? So prophetically, wherever you're standing, if you can get down, you can't be in squat. You can't squat roll. You gotta roll to the side. Whatever, you better start to pick up right now. Just as sure as you're picking it up, I hear the Lord say, you're picking up some stuff that he's gonna take from the enemy and transfer it and put it in your hands. Not only did you preserve what God gave you, but now he said, because you fought for what he gave you, now he's going to give you more. Somebody said, more. This is the last time. We all going down together. When you go down, just say more. Y'all ready? More! Wealth for pressure. Wealth for all my grandchildren. Wealth for my children. More in my pocket. More for the kingdom. More wealth. Somebody lift your hand and tell God thank you. Come on, tell the Lord thank you. I believe the word of the Lord. I believe God. What an awesome God we serve. Believe in the Lord your God. So shall you be established. Believe his prophet. And so shall you prosper. I see it right now. Thank God for perilous prosperity. In the name of Jesus, 
and that enemy had to come against you. He thought he was doing something. Thought he was flexing his muscles. But God said, I put you there to be a blessing. I put you there. Mm. Somebody tell your neighbor, say, God put him there to be a blessing. They came with an agenda, but they are a blessing. Judge, I just believe. I just believe, Judge, that God will put people around with an agenda, but they'll end up being a blessing. I got to stop. I promise you. Thank you, Lord. Bless you. I heard about you. I heard about you. Can I pray for you? I, I just want, can I anoint you with some oil? It's just some oil. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're in school in Alabama. Alabama A&M? All right. Thank you, Lord. You just ready to get on with things, right? Don't mind these people. We just like that. But Kayla tell you, that's just how we, we flow. I just want to anoint you and I just want to pray a simple prayer. In the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for your daughter. Lord, in the name of Jesus, you know where to touch. You know what she has need of. Oh, I'll just say it. Touch the eyes. It's about to she. Mm. Ah, ah. Oh God, touch the eyes. Let light be light and sharpness be sharpness. Ooh. Touch your vision, oh God. As only you can, God. We'll give you glory. We'll give you praise. We'll give you honor. In Jesus' name. Not only vision, but God bless her financially make ways out of no way more than scholarships more than living more God bless your holy name God I love you and I thank you in Jesus name could you just do me a favor just give a hug give a hug bless you I'm riding right with you too. Amen. God is good. Do great things. Alabama a &M. Amen. God bless you. If I knew the fight song for Alabama a and I would sing it. But I, I don't know the song. But I would sing it. God is good. Can we pray? We're going to pray. Maybe somebody doesn't know Jesus. We're going to pray. Father, I come to you as a sinner. You want to be saved? Pray with me. I believe that Jesus paid the price for my sins. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my God. Father, forgive me of my sins. Save me on today, Lord. That's the greatest prosperity. Get my soul right with you, Lord. Then the prayers of John will be reflected in my life. I wish, I pray above all, that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as our soul prospers. Bless my soul, Lord. Save me. In the name of Jesus. I believe in my heart that it's just that easy. So, Lord, I confess with my mouth that at this moment in time, I'm saved. So, Lord, I thank you for saving me. Thank you for being my Lord. Thank you for being my God. And God, I give you glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. If you received anything from the word of the Lord, or you love the Lord, just lift your hand and say something to him right now. Just say anything. Tell him something. He wants to hear from you. What a great God we serve. The is empty.
What a great God we serve. Holy Bethel, I love you. Thank you for putting up with me. Thank you for allowing me to be your pastor. If you remember Holy Bethel, I see people standing. If you remember Holy Bethel, can you just join those who are standing? Stand to your feet if you remember Holy Bethel. Just look down the road, look at somebody and love on them for a moment. Just I thank you for coming and I thank you for being here. And thank you for the anointing that you bring with you. And thank you for being in my experience. I want to thank you guys. You're the best church in the whole wide world. And I love you. You're good people. Thank you. You ought to look down your road, the people where you're standing, say, do you have a church home? Talk to them, say, you have a church home? You have a church home? You have a church home? So everybody needs a home. Everybody needs a house to go to. If you need a church home and you don't have one, talk to them, help me to talk to them, say, we'll be glad to have you here. You're welcome here. If someone needs a church home, you're more than welcome to come. I believe God. I believe his word. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. It's offering time. It's offering time. It's offering time. Praise the Lord. It is offering time in the house of the Lord. God has delivered a precious word unto us. And I just want to say, I believe God. I'm ready to receive everything that he has for us on today. Amen. And this is time we can all participate. We all can bless the house of the Lord on today. So if you're in the house and you need a tithe envelope so you can give and bless the house of the Lord, raise your hand. The ushers will come around and give that to you. Uh, if you're sitting at your seat and you want to get up and give with your debit card, you can go over there to my right and give. I don't want to slow you down. You know the ways to giving right now. So you can give. However you want to give on today, go online, go to the church website, go through Givelify, go through PayPal, but bless the house of the Lord on today. Uh, it's just a good place. This is a good place to sow seeds on today. So just sow into the house of the Lord. I'm going to pray over the offering. So all those that are giving, however you're giving, whatever you're giving to, you're giving to the building fund, you give giving to your seed, whatever you're doing, just do it with joy on today because God is blessing in this place, all right? Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this offering that we're about to receive. We thank you for every heart that's willing to give on today, God. Lord, we ask that you just continue to move by your spirit. Let your anointing leading God on today, God, as you begin to bless your people, to bless the house of the Lord, God. Let us do it with joy, God. Let us do it with laughter. Let us do it knowing that you're able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we could even ask or think. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. You're now in the hands of the deacons.
just a quick reminder that we will resume with our weekly food pantry immediately following service until 2.30 p.m. All ladies of Holy Bethel, you don't want to miss out on this upcoming Tuesday topics. Pace yourself. Moving ahead on time on September 19th at 7 p.m. via our Zoom platform. The Women's Department Retreat will take place on Saturday, September 23rd. The Women's Department will have a lineup of well sought after speakers in their respective fields, and you don't want to deprive yourself of a blessing, so please make sure to come out. Also, Supervisor Allen has a special request and is asking all ladies to sing with the choir on Sunday, September 24th, as we close out the Women's Retreat Weekend. Rehearsal is on September 22nd at 7 p.m., and for more information, please see Evangelist Joy Bronner. Lastly, Seniors Bible Study will be on September 18th. And I'll be at the women's retreat. Will you? This ain't no ordinary song, yeah. The God of Self is greater than the ordinary. So I'ma give them all I have in this world. for the word that we have received. Let us thank God for the word right now. Amen. Just a few observations, and then we will give our benediction. Amen. Women, the choir rehearsal is on Thursday, not Friday, Thursday. Because if you come Friday, you'll be the only one here. So come Thursday, this Thursday, at 7 o'clock p.m. Amen. At 7 o'clock p.m. So please come out. We are so very excited because we have a lineup on uh, this, this Saturday. Come on up. We have a lineup on this Saturday, and we are so, ladies, if you haven't registered, you need to register. Money is not the issue. It's not the hindrance. We have been given over uh, 20 sponsorships. So, amen. That is... And even from Barbados, they sent back a sponsorship to sponsor two women. So money is not the issue. I tell you all the time, your soul is the issue. So you need to be. We have a lineup of phenomenal women. Amen. I'm going to ask Missionary Collins to, to help with this. Amen. Amen. So here's our lineup. We have Dr. Valerie Bennett. We have Dr. J. Lynn Peabody Smith. Amen. We have our own sister, Jocelyn Williams, psychologist, yes. We have supervisor, Crystal Bracy. We have minister, Janice Robinson. We got a line up, so we've got good stuff prepared for you, but we need you. So please, Rich, I've got a great meal for you. It is going to be top notch. You don't want to miss it. Amen. So, ladies, I'm going to count you in. If you haven't registered, it's not too late. You don't need your money to register, but we just need a, a head count for the caterer. So we are going all out for you. So we need for you to come out so you can experience the goodness of the Lord. Listen, everybody standing, we have our new members reception. I want everyone uh, to bless yourself by meeting Amen. The next Supreme Court Justice of, of Gwinnett County. I speak those things that be not as though they already are. Amen. And so I want you to please come and to meet personally Attorney Williams. Those of you who are in law enforcement, those of you who are attorneys, those of you who are teachers, those of you who go to work every day, those of you who stay home, those of you who have children, those of you, those of you, you need to meet her. Amen. And so we are grateful to God for his many blessings. Amen. And if there be no, no other 
announcements, Pastor. Amen. We thank God. I had to run and make calls to the hospital. With uplifted hands, Father, we do thank you and we love you. You are a great, great God, and we are so grateful to be in your midst. God, thank you for showering us with your many blessings. Thank you so very much that you were, God, our most cherished and honored guest. God, we ask that you would go with us, God. Cover us. Provide for us. Give us what we need, God. We have picked it up, God, and we are grateful for your many blessings and all you have done for us. Now repeat after me. Now may the Lord watch between me and thee while we're absent one from another in Jesus' name. Amen. Be kind one to another. Greet your neighbor. Uh, new members, your reception is in the front vestibule. Women, they are having a brief, are they have still having a brief rehearsal after service? Yay, nay? No, that's a nay.